So today, uh, usually when I do my pod podcast, it's in Finnish and it's audio only, but this time I have my good friend, my good friend from from long time already, Phil Keggy, all the way from Nashville on the same screen with me. And uh, so this is the reason why we do this in English, obviously. <laughs> We're not going to do this in Finnish. And uh, this is so, okay. I think most of most of the viewers will know who you are, but you know, if there's anybody, Phil, who wouldn't, you know, Phil, Phil is a guitar player. I mean, I think that that's what people know. Uh, maybe they don't know that he's uh, a dear brother in Christ for me, for example, but for many, many other people, he's a believer and a follower of, of Jesus. And, uh, and you are also a, a husband mm -hmm. and a father. Absolutely. And a father, uh -huh. and a grandfather. Yeah. Yes, I am. And, and I a am. friend, you know, a friend, and and all of you know, mentor. I'm sure for many, and for me at least, and and you know, so there are there are many things that make up our our you know who we are, and and you know the different yes. things. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> But hey, um, I would like to know. Uh, well, I would like to just make it more clear to. Um, No, let's before we before we do that. Maybe just uh, how how do we how do we know each other? You know, in the first place, <laughs> we go way back. Well, I, it's like yes, early ninety, uh, early nineties, right? Early nineties. That's right, Nina. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You came to Nashville to record, and Buddy Miller, uh, the great Buddy Miller, uh, was your producer. Right. And, yeah. Yes. 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 And I think. Uh, I'm not sure how it was that he contacted me, but he contacted me and asked me if I could uh, come to his his home studio and play some guitar. I, I think I brought my acoustic and electric. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you requested me to be on your album or if he su suggested I be on your album. Uh, do you recall? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll I'll fill in a little bit. I'll fill in a little bit. Um, <laughs> it was, I think, it was the year before that you were playing in Holland. Oh and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was a uh, 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 Flavo festival, right? Yeah, you, you, well, maybe you did Flavo as well, but we did a concert. Or it was a tour. <clears throat> you you did a couple of concerts in Holland with Gerrit, who you know he was he was doing that. My manager who was you know booking you as well and and then uh, i was i was opening maybe for mm. one, one or two gigs and i remember i was so sick you know my i was so i hardly had any voice remember and then i always remember you were so great i mean like i was like this you know this girl from finland you know <laughs> and 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 you were so gracious with all those you know, you, you helped me with the throat it was I mean, it was chili powder and, and you know, the thing oh, like, okay, you, you do this and you do this and then, you know, it will help you and it will create a coating on you. It won't hurt so much. And, and so I, you know, I, I, I got through the concert. I think we did maybe two gigs. And because of that, it was so, well, I was very happy, of course, but it was like natural, you know, it felt natural that when we come here, there, I mean, to Nashville, that, you know, mm. if, if, if you could come, that would be, that would be just lovely. Yeah. So that's oh, it's great. Uh, I'd, I'd forgotten about the, the concert uh, and the fact that you remembered that I suggested cayenne pepper. Oh, a cayenne some, pepper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've been using cayenne pepper since 1977 and uh, it's helped me. I mean, it's brought yeah. my voice back when I had, right. you know, those those tough times losing sleep on the road. Yeah. And maybe getting a cold. It really helped. Uh, and it uh, it's a remarkable herb and I love it. And uh, yeah. my brother-in-law in, in Arizona grows his own peppers and he grinds <laughs> it and dehydrates it and he sends it to me and I, I, uh, I love it. So it's pretty Look organic. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It is. It is it's very organic. Or, very yeah. organic. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, it was great to be able to play on your first uh, project. Um, was that your first project? That you well, recorded? it was my it was my first outside of Finland. I, I I'd done one prior and that was in Finland. You know, that was and then. Oh, so, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then down the years, I got to play on a few more projects of yours, yeah. and uh, and so we're covering about thirty some years, thirty two years yeah. of yeah. of friendship, 
Friendship and collaboration, and especially lately, because lately we've actually composed a couple songs mm -hmm. together. Yeah, which, which is very, very yeah. special. Yeah, and it was very, well, in many ways special for me as well. But it, it also, because usually when I do something, it's always text first, and then I start, you know, but now it was like I had the, you know, what you sent to me, the audio, what you sent to me, and and also just the, the chords. It's like, <laughs> I don't usually have chords like that you know it's like it was so so nuanced and so sophisticated I was like okay I gotta you know I gotta think around this and so it was a totally different way and it taught me so yeah. much it was really you different did, you, you did a fantastic job uh putting lyrics to I will wait for you and uh and then you sent me back your demo of your words and your melody and um and I adapted it, and I, I sang the song. Right, and I think, right. I, and my friend Rex Schnelli, who we've uh, collaborated together, uh, he's he's known by others as Rex Paul. He um, he finished it out, put the drums and the keyboards yeah. and the bass and his BGVs, and uh, he's just so talented. Yeah, he took yeah. my 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 acoustic and my vocal. And then after he sent me the track back, then I added some slide guitar and some right. nice electric guitar. But um, I'm proud of that song that you and I wrote together. And I love oh. uh, the heart that's in it. In fact, a friend of mine who's a disc jockey, I've uh, been in radio for over 25 years. Um, he said, I love this song. Is it going to go on your next album? And I didn't know if I was going to have a next album. <laughs> But I still recorded it and sent it to him, and he loved it too. Oh, uh, it is okay. available on my on my Bandcamp. On yeah. I believe it's on uh, Backroom Tracks eleven or twelve. Okay, uh, okay, so, okay. So Bandcamp, Bandcamp is is where I mean where you can where we can find yeah the music. Yeah, but uh, but I'm I'm also if I do compile a, a collection of songs as a, as a album release. I will certainly include that song oh, well, and wow. also um, you and I wrote another song together that you uh, it's a voice in the desert right yeah yeah where yeah and also so it was yeah that was uh, a very different kind of, musically very very like a lamentation kind of a thing and you know yes, very exactly very uh, middle eastern slash Finnish mm -hmm. also because we're kind of lamenting <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's nothing like you, you, it, a song is really a good song when you finish a song, finish. So anyway. Um, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> so that song is yeah. definitely finished. Uh, um, but you know, uh, uh, it's a simpler progression than I will wait for you. It's more of a, like you meant, you said a, a lament and it's taken out of the Psalms, right, Nina? Yeah, and, and I put I put all kinds of things. Yeah, some and uh, I put, you know, I adapted from the from the scriptures, different things. And, and but I wanted to say, you know, I wanted to say, you know, uh, make way, for, make way for the Lord. And, and yeah, uh, you know, and the different things like we we are like grass, you know, we we we're not God, you know, all of those things. And we we need to understand right. who who he is and, and make way mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, for the listeners, uh, give us a little bit about um, how you first became a believer. What what okay. made you what made you what made you consider the Lord? You know, what did He do? <laughs> oh, he what he did was just wonderful. Uh, I was as a kid, I, I've loved music since I was a toddler, and my brothers would bring home records and. So I grew up in an atmosphere of music. My oldest sister was a singer and an actress in Hollywood. Right. And um, and then brother Dave, he played guitar some, and but he was mainly going to have a career as a pilot flying planes oh, okay. and building a plane one time. Um, and But he started me on the guitar when I was uh, about 11, 10 or 11. And... Uh, I just took to it because I love music. You know, I was really a big fan of the rockabilly era right. and oh, okay. Elvis, Elvis Presley and, and various groups that came along. Uh, and uh, when the Beatles came out, I was really into their sound, loved their singing and their sound. And, uh, 
I also loved instrumental music and instrumental bands, you know, like the Ventures. And so that, that okay. lays a, a, a foundation for who I became as a guitar player. But then through my teenage years, I was in various bands. And uh, um, my, the first band that was a real professional band, I joined in the, while I was in the eighth grade. And I was playing in clubs and bars and my mom and dad let me go. So Make eighth, sure eighth older, grade, okay. Eighth grade, I was, yeah. I was. Now my, my uh, mom and dad said to my older bandmates who were like juniors and seniors in high school, you take good care of my son and don't let anything happen to him. And so the bass player, who was a big guy, he, he, he watched out for me, you know, like a big brother, just right. so I could get out and play in front of people. And um, so uh, I could send you later, I could send you uh, pictures of those days oh, yeah. if you care. Oh, and yeah. you can oh, intersperse it. Because cause there's yeah. going to be post editing, right? Yeah. I, I'll send you a collection of pictures from the day. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, Please do. But then I was in various bands, uh, eighth, ninth, 10th grade. And then in the 11th grade, I started a band called the Glass Harp. And okay. uh, that's, that's the band that really began to really get some notoriety and attention in the um, Ohio, you know, area, Northeast or Eastern Ohio and into Pennsylvania. And we went up into eventually uh, Michigan and then toured the whole USA and okay. <clears throat> especially the West Coast. Uh, but during the time I was developing that band, I was experiencing a deep hunger. I knew I, I was raised a Catholic boy you know, I was one of 10 children, the ninth of right. 10 children. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so I had a, a reverence for God. I had a, a, a I, I knew there was a God and uh, oftentimes in great need, you know, um, my sister and I would get on our knees and pray. And, but I didn't have a, a real close relationship with Jesus, you know. But when my mom was in a car accident, at the, when I was at the age of eight, 18 and actually on the road at the time, <clears throat> I came home after that trip because no cell phones, nobody knew how to get a hold of me. Oh, so it wasn't yeah, until yeah. we actually got home, I, I found out that mom was in the hospital and I thought she was going to pull through, but she had internal injuries from this head on collision. Um, and when she passed away, uh, it's like the whole floor fell out you know from right. under me I, I my world was shaken pretty intensely you know uh, uh I got a call coming in but I'm gonna say yeah later uh okay okay are we back there We're we back. are hi yeah hi. so when my mom passed away it just devastated me but my oldest sister the sister Mary Ellen that I mentioned was an actress and a singer she had been born again and oh. she had experienced the love of god in a real beautiful personal way and she shared her story with me and she shared some scriptures with me and then she uh, the sunday after mom's funeral um she took me to a, a, a small assemblies of god church you know and and that's where i that's where i discovered you know god's love and that's where I invited Jesus into my life. And so. So you were 18. You were 18 at the time. Yeah, I was 18 at the time. Um, I heard this man speak and I felt God just pulling me toward him. I really did. And then my sister gave me a nudge. She said, why don't you go up and give your heart to the Lord? I said, why not? I've tried this. I've tried that. And, uh, and when I did, I went home. And something was changed inside of me. Oh. I wanted to listen to the song over and over again that I had a record by Blind Faith. Eric Clapton wrote this song, In the Presence of the Lord. It's, it's a very popular song from that era, 1969 or so. And um, so I listened to that song over and over again because it was the music I could relate to. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, but then it, but they're singing about the Lord. Now, simultaneously, out in California, the, the Jesus revolution, you know, the, the yeah. Jesus movement was really going strong, but I didn't know about it. I, 
you know, back in those days, you know, there was no social media. And right. then all of a sudden it came out on the, in the newspaper or the, the magazines like Life magazine about all the baptisms in the Pacific Ocean and people, young hippies giving their hearts to the Lord. And, and that's what I was. I was just a, a young, short little guy, little hippie guy who his world, my world was guitar and, uh, and my band and everything. And that's everything I was living for. And then all of a sudden I had a reason to live. Uh, yeah. I wrote a song called I Believe that Rex Paul and I did on an album called Illumination a few years ago. Yeah. And it was the song I believe. And, I, and that describes exactly what happened to me in my generation at that time. Okay. It was powerful and it swept the country. And um, I, I, began, I got a Bible and I began to read it and learn God's word and and it wasn't, I didn't need anybody to interpret it for me. I didn't need a priest to tell me what it means. Mm. The Holy Spirit showed me what it means to live for Jesus. And right. uh, that's what I wanted to do. There, there's something that uh, I know from before that something that happened with your, because I know that you, the Bible is very important to you. And I know that something during that time or something, there was a, there was an incident in a, in a it was secular gig somewhere you were opening for some other band and in the green room you were reading your bible and then something something came out of that can you can you just share that a little bit yeah like for instance um th this took place in san diego california okay. september 1971 we were doing a, a tour up the coast of california we played in san diego we went to la played the whiskey a go go we went up opened up for lots of great bands in, at that time uh you know oakland San, San francisco uh and onward um but um uh, i had been walking with the lord for about a year and a half at this point <clears throat> and uh i our band did a set and we were really good that night we opened for a band that had a very big hit record at the time called a uh, white bird and the group was called it's a beautiful day and i remember wow. there was a violinist who wore a white suit all white and he had a oh, uh, I even think his violin was white you know everything was kind of white but but anyway uh, after our set which went really well I was up in the green room and I just you know waiting to hear you know whatever comes next we might have been between two sets uh, I'm not sure or we opened up for um, the group yeah and we were done then I was waiting for them to do their set but in the meantime i was opening my bible and reading it and, and the mc of the gig came in to the room and he goes oh excuse me i don't know what you do are you reading are you do you need some privacy i go no i'm just i'm just reading my bible and he kind of scratched his you know his head and he goes bible you know and uh <laughs> he had told me that he was a drug dealer you know uh but that day he he didn't do anything uh and all of a sudden, I just began to share my story with him about what happened in my life the previous year. And the Holy Spirit just got a hold of him and, and, and he just started to weep. And uh, I could tell it was really sincere. And I guess the Holy Spirit lovingly brings conviction, you know, upon mm -hmm. our, our hearts and our souls and our minds. And because God is, you know, he's not pushy that way. He, he's gentle and lowly right. in heart, as we know. Uh, the scriptures tell us and uh and he he actually prayed a prayer to invite the lord into his heart and uh he got a hold of me a month later because we were still touring california and i was staying at my brother's house and i he got i gave him uh, uh the address of where i will be staying in case you know he wants to get a hold of me and so he got a hold of me and he came up to visit and he brought a beautiful guitar, handmade guitar, a oh. Mark Evan white book, acoustic guitar. And he gave it to me as a gift for leading him to the Lord. And his name is Don. And uh, we still are in touch 51 years later. And he right. became a pastor. He became a pastor and uh, uh, he's got a beautiful spirit of joy and he's got a great smile. And he's, he's 76 years old now, I think. Uh, but he's still alive and well, and right. it, it was one of those wonderful stories, you know, that uh, I'll always remember. So, 
I can yeah. I can imagine you. I mean, that just sounds so like you. <laughs> you know, uh, about just you know, if you fast forward now, like t- till today or you know this year or whatever, what does your life look like? You know, daily routines, daily routines as far as mm, maybe music goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what do you do anyway every day, or do you do something every day? What do you do? Uh, you know, maybe you know, family wise or, or, you know, just mm-hmm. every, everyday things or, or how, how is your relationship with the Lord? What does he look like on a given Tuesday or in a given, you know, Saturday or, you know, and what is today? Friday? Today's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's beautiful every day. He's wonderful every day. Um, um, when my wife usually wakes up a little before me, uh, and she makes her coffee and and then she'll heat up the water for my mud water uh, and um, and then we get up uh, we'll we'll have devotions most of the time most mornings okay. and we love uh, reading out of streams in the desert uh, and also the morning prayers that are offered in there because they're so full of scripture and yeah uh, they're honest you know uh, they I, the prayers identify with our humanity. Uh, uh, sometimes, excuse me. Sometimes we read uh, out of a devotional by Paul Tripp called "Morning Mercies," which brings us into the Word and gets us closer to God and uh, encourages us. Um, another one is Jesus Calling. Uh, I, I love it because it's like the it's like the Lord's heart speaking to you through these words. And then the scripture references that confirm, yes, this is what he says. That's yeah. what he says. So uh, we, and then we pray for our, our family. We pray for our friends. We pray for our country. We pray for our, our state or, you know, uh, the, whatever is most pressing in our hearts. We have a, a few friends who have been going through so much hardship physically and, uh, and um, our hearts really ache for them. And so, uh, we we try to get off to the right start uh, with prayer and just being in touch with Jesus and yeah. Bernadette and I together holding hands and, um, and we have three kids and we have three grandchildren uh, and two of our children are married we have three grand boys and we we take care of um, Towns and Ezzy uh, two days a week and, and occasionally there's a third day in case. Because our daughter, uh, she and her husband are in the middle of moving, and also right. she's baking cakes, beautiful cakes, uh-huh. and because uh, she used to be a baker at a restaurant, and she's just got a real gift artistically, and wow. uh, so that gives her the time to be able to do that. Yeah. When, when I was younger, my wife gave me the time. I had to tour, and I had to write, and I had to record, and everything, and and it was always normal, you know. Uh, but now that you could say we're in uh, semi-retirement to a great extent, uh, me, I don't do many concerts these days, and I will be playing next Friday for the first time since February uh, wow. out, in, out in public. Uh, <clears throat> so, so we get up and we, we, we get our day underway. And we look out our windows. I love to mow the grass. I mow my own yard. I mow my neighbor's yard to my left and my neighbor's yard to my right. <laughs> well, because they both they both have health issues, whether it's knees or hips or something or back. Right. Uh, but I just love mowing grass. I put my <clears throat> Bose headphones on and I'll listen to sometimes just people's testimonies. I'll listen to music. I'll listen to what I'm working on musically. Yeah. Yeah. And because um, uh, you do, because you do have, I mean, you have your your own studio in the house. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you, you'll be working there as well. Yeah. As Sorry. well, and uh, I, I get the opportunity to play on other people's music, and uh, I quite enjoy that. In fact, the older I've gotten as a guitarist, I, I find that I blend in better as a musician to contribute to their music rather than putting my Phil Keggy stamp on their re- recording uh, like a superimposed thing. 
yeah. I want to blend in like I'm really part of the tapestry of their creation, their music. Let me uh, let me say <laughs> something. Sorry, let me say something here. Just something, just something that I want to say just about that because this is exactly what you've done for me, and oh. this is just so beautiful. It's not like I mean you could do like you could play like a hundred miles per hour, you know, whatever, you know, like because you you know how to do that. I mean you know how to play the guitar, right? But it's it's not like okay I'm, I'm you know I feel okay yeah I want to you know uh, you just I remember already you know nineties when when uh, when you were playing on my you know those those two CD albums then I remember you said once like you looked at me and you said in the studio like so how do you want how do you want what do you want me to play how do you want me to play something like that and you said and you said I just want to I just want to do what is com complementary to the song. And to me, it was like, like mm -hmm. wow, okay. The, you know, I want to be like that when I grow up. I want to be like that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Aww. but okay, go on. But I just wanted to say, like, yes, but, this is true, what you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, there have been a number of artists that I've played on, and their music is good, so good, and their songwriting is so good that I want what I do to really... Uh, augment the song and uh, you know bring taste to it you know and not just just because I, I know the chords and I know what notes to play the tone is so important too yeah. it's like the tone helps with the atmosphere and I've learned a great deal in terms of engineering and uh, to get the sweetest tones out of my guitar yeah. for whatever purpose it's uh, I'm called to play you know and so I I can testify to yeah. that. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. 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 What was that other song? I, I now your servant can go in peace. Is that? The oh song? yeah, the one that we did both in English and, and Hebrew. Yeah. Now you let me go in peace. Ooh, and and when you said sound and tone, you just you you just make it so. I mean, obviously, you know the notes that you play, but how you play them, it's so it's exquisite. It's like it's like the track that you sent to me was like the song itself already, and and. And also, it was just every note was there that needed to be there, but it wasn't like like you said. Also, like no, I'm not I'm not going to be all over the map, you know. And and just it was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now you let me go in peace. Tfilat Shimon Hatzadik in Hebrew. Yeah, that was the song. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. Lakai, <laughs> lakai. But uh, <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that, that, that's that's something I think comes with maturity and years and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, uh, on my band cam site, which is called Keggy's Garage, uh, uh, there are really recent recordings. And then there's throughout the, the past 10 years, then throughout the past 20 and 30 and 40 and 50. I mean, it goes as far back as my teenage demos I used to do. Wow. And I listen to that stuff and I just laugh because I'm just this ambitious little kid trying mm -hmm. to play as many notes as I could. Uh, but on the other hand, you could see that I was striving to become a, a bit of a songwriter. And, you know, I'm not I'm not known for my songwriting. I'm mainly known for my guitar playing. But I've had a few, I would say, uh, good moments oh, yeah. through the years that really mean a lot to me. Songs like Way Back Home, Olivia, um, Maker of the Universe, and uh, Under the Grace, Tender Love. Uh, and then I've, I've got my instrumental projects that actually are even, it, are as special as the good vocal projects, you know, but I, I just love melody and I love tone and I love atmosphere and I love the gift that God's people have given to this earth with their musicality, you know, from other cultures, even. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that, you know, we've talked about uh, uh, Eastern European music or yeah. uh, music that comes out of, uh, out of Asia, um, out of Israel, out of South America, and our own roots of music, you know, the gospel roots of music here in America. Um, there's so much to enjoy. It's like a, it's like a garden, you know, a garden yeah. of fruits and vegetables. You know, uh, the various uh, styles uh, have really influenced me, and I think that's why I'm a little 
uh, there's a lot of variety in what I offer as yeah. a musician. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, I've noticed. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. The, yeah, and you you put it together. Yeah, you put it together with love, and and that love. Well, you are you know as a per, you know as a person, you 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 have this way of being with people. I I guess you, you probably were that like that also before you became a believer. But the Lord has definitely you know owned owned it you know and and made it into His way of yeah. Yeah, I, I think well, I was I, I was much more insecure uh, before I became a uh, Christian. Mm, uh, okay. The Lord gave me a confidence uh, that I didn't have prior to that. Uh, okay, it's just hard to imagine, you know, that you. you I, would have, I, I, it's hard to imagine that you would have been something different than you are now. But but of course, you know, it must be true when you say that, you know. Yeah. Well, I think I think you know the Lord just teaches you how to be a child of God. You know, mm. with more more of his character more of his you know the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness self-control those things are so uh, to me when i meet people that have the fruit of the spirit in their lives they are so refreshing to be around yeah that's and true. and and i also um you know like like we're talking about the routine of the day i don't have a strict uh practicing routine that uh, I, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, if you don't, I mean, if you don't do studio, would you still pl practice play? You know. Um, well, you know, I, I, I would, but not so stringently as I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, plus, you know, it's an interesting thing that's happened. Uh, I had a, an injury in my shoulder last May. I fell in the kitchen, slipped and fell, and landed right on my shoulder, and I tore a main muscle and two tendons and I had to have rotate rotator cuff surgery and I never experienced anything so painful in my life um it was pretty strong and I I couldn't play acoustic for two months um yeah. then I started to be able to play a little bit now and, and I'm for, back to playing and for, for those who don't know why you were because I mean I, I was there I mean I we talked about it but for those who don't know the difference, why could you not play the acoustic guitar, but you could play the electric guitar? Why? Uh, I could play the electric guitar uh, because the guitar is thinner. And I just to grab my arm around it, it didn't require it extending it out like you do when you play acoustic, uh, which I couldn't do, you know. Now, um, I can raise my arm. Wow, now you can high. do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I feel like I'm, someone's pushing down on it you know it's still weak the muscles are still weak but at least I can play for a while now I have to play next Friday and that's going to be interesting and what I need to do between now and next Friday is really dedicate my time to working out a set of songs both instrumental and vocal songs right. and uh uh you know so I can have some confidence I, I just need it because I don't I don't sit around the house and play guitar all day. <laughs> I find other things to do, you know. Yeah, okay. This and, is what I wanted to hear. I, I think people probably think that you would just go, oh. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah when I was, yeah, when I was, uh, you know, like ninth grade. I mean, I probably had my guitar in on on the bed with me. When I woke up, I'd grab it and just start playing it. That's how I was as a kid. But you know, that's what it takes. You know, you, you need to have that level of dedication. To yeah. be to, to get good, and um, and I'm not like great. I'm not the best. I'm not anything like that. But I am among thousands and thousands of fine guitar <laughs> players. I'm one of them, and I've yeah, always okay. known that. I, I have always known that, you know, because um, my dad told me when I was 12 years old. He said, "Now re remember, son, guitar players are a dime a dozen," which means. Um, there's tons of them out there, you know, um, and I and I discovered that's true. And I enjoy the gifts other other guitar players have. They've influenced me so many. There's a list of names that's huge who have influenced me. Not only guitar players, but composers, and you know, because I grew up loving classical. I grew up loving um, certain kind of pop music and um, instrumental music and. Uh, uh, I, I just have such an appreciation for all kinds of music and all styles and all cultures. Right. So, but you know, it's, it's the Lord that really uh, 
when it comes to me making my own music, I feel that he's inspiring to become more true to my instrument and true to him and true melodically. And I hope I still have something to um, share with the world, you know, with my music as yeah. time goes on. Because I'm 71 now, uh, but up here, I still think I'm 35, you know. Right. I do. <laughs> you, you, uh, you talked about the things that I wanted to ask you, you know, as, you know, as, as I think we're kind of finishing, uh, you know, slowly here. Uh, what, uh -huh. what, what you think is, yeah, is important. You're know, like, if you, you know, if you had to, somebody who's not maybe necessarily just a guitar player, but anybody who is in music, uh, let's say, particularly maybe somebody who's a, who's a believer, but maybe not a believer, but what, what, what would you say now? What is important? What is important? You know, what, 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 mm. what is, what is worth putting your effort in, you know, life, life in general, life in general. Well, that's a very good question. And that's the most important question right now of the day. I think it is uh, to keep our hearts and minds open to what God wants to do in us and through us. Um, I was thinking just the other day how our words really matter. What we speak really matters. When we pray for somebody we love, uh, uh, that prayer goes out and always it will be there. If that prayer is alive, that prayer will always work. And God always listens to an earnest prayer, a prayer of faith, a prayer that is sincere. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just in everyday life, it's like, I love to compliment my wife and my children and tell them what they mean to me. And that enriches their lives. Mm -hmm. Our grandchildren, let them know how much they are loved and bless them, you know, lay hands on them and bless them and hug them and tell them, I just love you so much. And um, because that's the stuff that counts. What's wrong with the world is that uh, people don't know how to love or they haven't been loved like they should be, you know, loved well and, and, and raised in the love of God, you know, because God is love. Everything that is good is of God. And uh, so that is what's most important uh, than anything because you know if your life is not at peace it doesn't matter what you do you know it's like they say you can have money but if you don't have your health what good is it right yeah. that's what they say to some people I've, it's like spiritual health is so important yeah. to uh, to be right with God to be right with your fellow man and to be a blessing where you can uh, yeah. uh, that's, that's the kind of stuff that means the most to me and yeah. uh, I hope I can encourage others to really listen to try to hear the voice of God by not necessarily audibly because I I've never heard the voice of God audibly, right. but you get these impressions deep inside. Sometimes it's called conviction. Sometimes it's called, it's like confirmation uh, of like, where, where, where does it say in the Bible, you know, uh, you will hear a voice behind you. Yeah. This is the way. This is the way. Yeah, walk in it, you know, yeah. and it's like the nudging and, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to guide us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's so important to be right with God and to be right with each other and yeah. to walk in, in love. You know, that's what I feel is the most important thing. And music can come out of that. Yeah, music can come out of that. Music is what we do. Living a life for God is who we are. I think so. That's well. That's really well put. That that I, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> that's well. Good. Put. Yeah. Good. Um, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Oh, you're uh, welcome. You know, a big thank you. And uh, uh, well, I'm I'm gonna you know when you send those pictures, let's let's sh share them here. You know, and then also your band camp. Obviously, people. You know, there's gonna be you know links down here below and and so phil's music and and other things and uh yeah there, there are so many things we you and i could talk about but uh and and it's like it's it's a well you know from you so <laughs> so uh Aww. but I, I just say for today you know for today i say thank you thank you oh you're welcome you're welcome yeah. here i'll here I'll, I'll grab this guitar real quick Oh yeah. 
and I'll and I'll I'll strum something for you. See if it Thank doesn't you. distort. Thank you for today. I am grateful for today is all I have. Lord, thank you for today. I am grateful for today is all I have. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, there you are. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes. God bless you all. Thanks for uh thanks for the time spent. Thanks.